fashion industry broadcast and Style Planet TV are proud to bring you their new Netflix original series, The Girl's Guides to the World of Designer Fashion. This new six-part series explores the seductive world of designer fashion. Series one, the history of lingerie. Series two, the legend of the designer bag. Series three, the mystery of the high heel. Series four, American fashion. Series five, Italian fashion, and series six, Paris fashion. Feet and shoes feature in many of our most powerful myths and fairy tales. From Cinderella and Puss in Boots, right through to the Wizard of Oz. There's no place like home. Modern day social anthropologists often trace the popularity of high heels to the rise of stiletto feminism, which encompasses both traditional femininity and also power. Artists have long explored the shoe as a fetish object. Andy Warhol was obsessed. He first drew them simply as fashion illustrations, but then they became the focus of a series of famously sought after screen prints in the 1980s. Quentin Tarantino makes sure to have women's feet star in all his films, and Helmut Newton frequently fetishized high heels in his photography. Helmut never makes a secret about his love of nudes in high heels, of money, and of a certain world of wealth. So what is the big deal with the heel? The transformation of the female body due to wearing high heels is a very simple thing. Once you put a high heel on, you project your entire body. A woman projects her entire body in the front. In order to correct that posture, she has to project that part, meaning the breast, more in the front, but also to correct the lower part, the ass is going to be on the back. So it basically reshapes a lot and it creates these curves due to the gravity center changing. And that's as simple as that. Just a handful of luxury stalwarts are so synonymous with a color that consumers can instantly equate that shade with the name. So how does a brand own a tone and should smaller labels try? When LVMH agreed the $16 billion deal to purchase the Tiffany & Co, the luxury conglomerate, they were also buying a particular shade of blue, Pantone 1837. Also known as Robin's Egg Blue, is in the minds of consumers globally, Tiffany Blue. And so powerfully does it signify the storied American jeweler's presence, visual identity and heritage. Don't you just love it? Love what? Tiffany's. But just like Pantone 1837 means Tiffany, so does a certain lacquer red color mean the name Lou Boutin. Often reduced to one signature characteristic in footwear design, the red sole shoe, famous French designer Christian Louboutin ultimately redefined the meaning of luxury footwear business. In examining the history of the accessory and shoe design, these shoes are more than just a status symbol concept or trademark counterfeit disaster proof device. They are legitimate works of art in their own right. Red sole shoes are also the centerpiece of Louboutin's childhood fascination with costuming, cited as his biggest inspiration in turning into a fashion designer. Louboutin's personal predilections before fashion design were first hinted at in some episodes of Nocturnal Mischief. Louboutin broke his family's strict guidelines by following his dreams. The young Louboutin was forbidden to quit school early, but he solved this dilemma by being expelled. Prior to his expulsion, his timely formation of the greatest heel was influenced by showgirls, as well as drawings and museum-based art. Another provocation of Louboutin's background 
was his childhood feminine surroundings, as he lacked a father figure. Christian would often spend the majority of his time with his mother and three sisters. Louboutin's other sources of inspiration were the ballet's pointed shoe and Marie Antoinette in a later period, where he designed modern takes on an 18th century look. It's not too much, is it? Oh, no. One of Christian's first apprenticeships saw Louboutin sewing sequins onto mannequins. This process would inspire him to expand into other aspects of his design later in life, ever expanding upon his childhood drawing skills. His endeavours saw him working freelance for Chanel and YSL prior to opening his boutique. Enamoured by both ready-to-wear and couture creations in the form of stilettos, Louboutin then designed them for Jean-Paul Gaultier, Chloe and Lanvin. At these various houses, his immaculate craftsmanship would be advanced, insofar as designs of innovative heel heights and forms. But Louboutin had developed a goal for the future, to make a woman look beautiful, to make her legs look as long as they could. Elegant and whimsical, his work offered new takes on low-heeled styles, which ultimately became famed for dressier designs as bejeweled accessories or the incorporation of leather and frills, arguably, Louboutin has cemented his name as a permanent fixture towards the ideal creation of the ideal heel. It was in the early 1990s that Christian Louboutin had launched his line of women's shoes. In 1992 to 1993, the legendary red soles were added to the line. He stated, I wanted to create something that broke rules and made women feel confident and empowered. Louboutin wished to break norms, to allow women to wear stilettos whenever they wanted. Ten years later, he would expand into handbags. The luxurious elegance and global recognition of his label was born of a pure, atypical accident. Usually, a global iconic element of a house is planned by design, but the red soul was birthed as a prototype of the Warhol piece, Flowers. Because of that shoe that I've been designing the red soles. So that shoe has a very important story for me. It's called the Pensée and this shoe, I drew that shoe in 92, then it came out in 93 and the first shoe was exactly that one. The difference is that I was not really completely happy with the design. I had in mind the, a portrait of Andy Warhol called Flowers so I had this shoe in my hand and I had the drawing and when I was looking one from the other I still favor the drawing and I just couldn't really explain me why. It looked good from the profile, from the front it looked good too, it's, and, but when I turned it from the back there was this big black sole which, which was almost like a stain because there was no dark colors in, uh, in my drawing. So. I looked at it and I thought, I would like to see if I removed that black uh, shadow. So Anna, who was there, was trying, uh, was actually poling, polishing her nails, girl who was trying on the shoe. So I grabbed the nail polish and I said, sorry, I just want to try something. And then I painted, with her nail polish, I painted the sole. And then it looked exactly like my drawing, so I thought it's just a matter of color. I get the red as a signature. Red lacquered shoes with well-crafted heels became an iconic offering with a cult following. High fashion and high heels lie hand in hand within Louboutin's work. Christian Louboutin has transformed a shoe that was once ignored into a commercial hit, an aesthetic pleasure. This aesthetic pleasure calls back to the male gaze. As Louboutin affirms, men are like bulls. They cannot resist the red soul. Funnily enough, he later made a nail polish to commemorate the invention of the red soul, Rouge Le Bouton. Throughout the years, he has continued to turn out continuous seasons, utilizing his abundant imagination to reinvent his footwear. It is a great achievement in itself to transform a surreal shoe into a commercial hit, but it is another to continually innovate while being known as a one-trick pony.
if you're designing shoes, definitely Cinderella is one of the biggest icons if you think about it. You know, you have few people who are so linked to shoes, so yes, definitely. When I first started my company 20 years ago with my first shop, I always had one pair of shoes, which I called for myself the Cinderella shoe, knowing that it was a shoe that I could not reproduce. It, it was done one, maybe two, three times maximum, but I didn't have the material to do more. I, I couldn't do it more. So I was always calling that shoe the Cinderella shoe. Like one day it goes, it's here, and then one day it disappears and you never see it. So yes, definitely Cinderella has always been on my side. Louboutin's aesthetic, while defined by the red sole, can fluctuate within various silhouettes and the usage of fun elements within footwear. He employs spikes, protrusions, big toe boxes, bulging heels, and plunging figures. Each one of these features constructs a diverse visual blend between royal family wear and elaborate bold costume wear. While innovating stylistically, his reach in fashion is ever expanding. One of the first things which came to my mind when I was approached by Disney for The Last Jedi was the excitement to work with ILM. ILM is a great place to develop ideas. Everything starts with a pen, everything starts with an idea, and everything starts on the creative part. Okay. In The Last Jedi, a lot connected me to the color red. Planet Kraid, it has an underground made out of red stalactites. Totally captivating for me. It's under the surface. That's my favorite part of the different landscapes of The Last Jedi. It's very, very nice to work with Disney and ILM because you can see the transformation from an idea being developed into a form of reality through technology, there is this idea of going further, pushing boundaries. There is no limit, and the no limit is really great for creativity. Hey. <laughs> Working for Star Wars is a match made in heaven, or let's say a match made in the skies. Louboutin's red sole shoes have been the catalyst of many dire outcomes, namely counterfeits and copyright issues. With his very trademark application, Christian had to explain how the red soles came to be. His famous design element was a result of his intuition. The sentiment that the shoes lacked energy, so he applied red nail polish to the sole of the shoe. And this success rendered a permanent fixture. The red sole came to him to stay with him. In 2007, the protection of his design element was secured. It's difficult to rationalize the idea of trademarking a color without consulting the heritage and prestige of Christian Louboutin's brand. The luxury brand's fierce and upscale global following as a business has substantiated a registered sole patent. Louboutin himself held a presence of mind, compulsion to make a trademark to protect his signature element of work. As huge players, namely Yves Saint Laurent in 2012, have faced copyright battles with Louboutin, one can only imagine the imitation replica processes occurring in spaces exterior to the big fashion houses. Astonishingly, a rare instance of direct consumer education is needed. When discussing Christian Louboutin's red sole shoes, ubiquitous existent counterfeits of these shoes plague the earth. A bewildering example of this was the seizure of over 20,000 fake pairs of shoes exported from China in 2012. Louboutin's website now has a stop fake page in order to warn consumers of properties of a fake shoe, indicators of a false pricing or advertising, and lists the official retailers. Moreover, statements about where real manufacturers also are mentioned to avoid further confusion for buyers. 
Louboutin's requirement to straightforwardly educate his consumers is indicative of his true overbearing success in making an unstoppable commercial masterpiece. The Bada Shoe Museum's senior creator once told the New Yorker that Louboutin took part of a shoe that had previously been ignored and made it not only visually interesting, but commercially useful. Louboutin has elicited a tremendous amount of attention towards a single aspect of a shoe that society had forever neglected. No single shoe characteristic is as well known or as well regarded as the red sole shoes. A glossy, vibrant and vivid red is lacquered in the message of serendipity. Despite attempted fakes and references rip-offs from other designers, Louboutin shoes carry an immense social status. Having gained vast popularity amongst celebrities, famous figures and socialites, these shoes sell for tens of thousands of dollars if they were owned by the right individual. Louboutin's telltale color red has written its way into the world of superstar celebrities such as Oprah, Beyonce, Rihanna. His artistic shoes have been adored by various megastars and social figures. Madonna often wore his treacherously high heels during her numerous music videos. Her entrance to the world of Louboutin heralded a high value promotion for his brand that led to even more celebrities adopting his work. Being so heavily associated with glitz, glamour and beauty, Louboutin's red sole shoes are well and truly emblematic of a social status symbol. Yeah. Exactly how obscene an amount of money were you talking about? Just profane or really offensive? Really offensive. I like him so much. Material gain and material needs are two separate concepts that fashion tends to blend. A projection of this trend may be summarised by sociologist Thurston Veblen, who developed the theory of conspicuous consumption in the late 19th century. His book, The Theory of the Leisure Class, discusses the actions of the wealthy displaying their income through material goods, rather than trying to have a positive impact on other socioeconomic classes. Louboutin implicitly aims to negate Veblen's theory that suggesting of society being characterised by wasted time and money. Branded footwear such as Louboutin grant people a large priority. Engrossed by this priority, wearers of luxury clothing are fixated upon what others' perception of their fashion choices. In terms of wants and needs, the discussion of luxury desire is expertly woven into our thoughts by Christian Louboutin. He achieves this not only through advertising campaigns, but within styling celebrities on the red carpet or other glamorous events. Louboutin's mischievous sense of play is often seen in his marketing initiatives. One season, Christine Louboutin made a calendar, but this wasn't just your typical shoe mailer. It was a series of photos of severed ladies' legs in boxes sent out to the media as part of his new collection's media kit. Another season, he ringed the famous ponts and streets of Paris with larger than life-size red sole shoes. Various exhibitions have been faithful to his many shoe endeavours. He will forever be remembered as pivotal in the support of Stiletto's return through the 90s and 2000s. His penchant for dressy evening wear in ostentatious adornment has become synonymous with celebrity-laden style throughout the ventures of his now palpably successful brand. February 2020, as the COVID store was brewing, Louboutin opened his epic shoe exhibition in Paris. Speaking at an exclusive press conference to launch, L'Exhibition Ist, Louboutin called the project a homecoming of sorts. It's a big mix of my work as well as what inspired it, he said. We just finished it yesterday, and in the mix are a love of Paris, of spectacle, of innovation, craftsmanship, travel, from an early stint as a documentarian for Roger Vivier to a brief interlude as a landscape architect. The commercial success of designer goods may be narrowed down to its social status, as well as the aforementioned luxury price classifications. Louboutin has 35 brand name giant boutiques worldwide. He also sells in 150 department stores, in addition to its headquarters in Paris. 
With shoes reaching between 400 and 6,000 US dollars per pair, Christian reaches a new heights of a price point in tandem with quality. Beyond social status, the main reason why these shoes reach such exorbitant prices is due to their costly Europe-based production. In recent times, it is claimed he sells between half a million and one million pairs of shoes per year. Ultimately, Louboutin has crafted a unique place in the pantheon of heel masters. Although he has made many claims to fame, what will permanently mark his legacy are his exquisite shoes.